Now an animation effect is very similar to a transition. A transition affects the entire slide. Animation, however, you can apply to certain objects within the slide itself. Now most of the time when we create animations, they're going to be executed by clicking the mouse, which means step two, step three, the same way we go back and forth between the slides. Now some of the more common animation effects is to have one bullet come in at a time. So you can talk about the first bullet and then have the second bullet appear and then the third bullet appear. Another common one is to have bullets dim out once you've talked about them so that the next one in line is going to be lit up. But you can also do animation effects on any object within the presentation. An example, you might have pictures. It might be two or three pictures. And maybe you want them to appear one at a time in a certain sequence. Maybe it's some sort of process where you want it to appear right there in a circle as you talk about each one. Whatever it is, with animation effects, you can decide what appears, when it appears, which order it appears. In this presentation, we're going to add some animations. Now, when you're adding animations, you can basically animate when pieces of the screen are going to come in, whether it's a text bullet or a title. So in this case, we're at a new presentation, and I'm clicked right here in the middle of the title itself, and on the Animations tab, I can choose how I want this particular title to work. So what I'll do is click on Fade, and you'll see, of course, what that's going to look like. Now, if you didn't see that, you can always click and then hit the Preview button, and you'll see that it goes from nothing to something. It essentially fades in. Now, if you wish to change animations on other slides, or even on this slide, it's just a matter of picking which slide, which object, and exactly how you want that to happen. So again, I can still click within the title, or even at this particular case, down here where the name is, and the animation I will choose for this one is to fly in. Now let's go ahead and preview this slide, and you'll see there it is. One fades in, and the name Jane Williams comes in. I'll show you that one more time. Okay. Now here, I'm going to click down on slide number two, and we'll do the exact same thing, only we'll do it two or three times. So under animation, I'm going to say fade by first level paragraphs. And notice what's happened here is we have bullet one, then bullet two, and then bullet three. So as I'm talking about a slide, each one of these will come in one by one and basically have a nice effect. So let's go over to the Slideshow tab, and we're going to view the first two slides, and I'll give it a click, and then I'll give it a click, and you'll see every time I click the mouse, one of these will fade in. Now we'll transition to slide number two, and I'll click my mouse, and with each click, we can bring in one more bullet point, slowly fading in. And of course, we haven't moved over to four, or to slide number three, so when we get to this slide, it just all comes in at once because there's been no animation effects. So I'll go ahead and hit Escape, because that's the only part of this particular slideshow I'd like to spend time previewing for now. Down here, on slide number eight, we have a couple of different items. Now, if I click within the text, you'll see I have three-phase deployment, cross-functional teams. But here, I also have a graphic, so I might want to determine how that graphic's actually going to come in as well. So let's talk about the text first. I'll go ahead and highlight the text, and we'll go to animations. We'll wipe by first level paragraphs. And now I'll go ahead and click here on this particular object. And for animation, I'll go ahead and tell this that it can fly in as well. And you'll see one, two, three, all those parts come in order. So let's see that full screen. I'm going to go over to the slideshow button and run this slideshow from current slide. Really, this is the one slide I'd like to pay attention to. So we have our schedule, three-phase, cross-functional, 
and here it comes. So when you're dealing with animations, it's just a matter of thinking through what objects are on that slide and how you want each object to be introduced. The default, of course, is they'll be introduced in the same order that you create them. If you do create them out of order and they're not coming in the right order, there are screens within PowerPoint for you to essentially set up all of those and really spend significant time ordering each one of the objects, whether there be three objects or whether there be 30, so they're all coming in at the order that you specify.